question. So if you could recognize and make that opening statement. Thank you, Senator Subblefield, Representative Fike. Thank you for the invitation to speak uh, on my decision to support the resettlement of a limited number of refugees from war-torn countries into our state. First, it is important to understand who qualifies as a refugee. A refugee is not someone who crosses our borders illegally or someone who enters our country and claims asylum. A refugee coming to America is not an illegal entry. A refugee often waits years to be authorized to come to the United States legally, and the refugee is vetted and has more security checks than any other type of immigrant who comes to the United States. The vetting process includes biographic and interagency security checks, homeland security interviews, fingerprint scans, and biometric security checks and a medical exam. Once screened and selected, the refugee goes through a cultural education program by the United States. Now let me take you back in time. Four years ago, information was floating around the state that thousands of Syrian refugees were coming to Arkansas. Despite the welcoming nature and compassion of Arkansans, I was concerned about security and the lack of information that was available to me as governor. I opposed a mass relocation of Syrian refugees because I did not have the information to give confidence to my decision. For these reasons, I issued a statement that I opposed a mass relocation of Syrian refugees to Arkansas. Some of you have asked, well, what has changed? The answer, a lot has changed. The Trump administration has made a number of changes. They have limited the number of refugees nationwide to 18,000 with likely fewer than 50 coming to Arkansas in 2020. Second, the priorities for refugee resettlement have changed from focus on balancing geographic regions to placing a priority on those suffering religious persecution and those who have cooperated with the United States in the war against terrorism. The vetting and security checks have been dramatically increased, and very importantly, the state and local governments have been included on the decisions and have been provided essential information that was previously unavailable. As a result of these changes, I have been briefed on the security checks by my former colleagues at the Department of Homeland Security. I have closely examined the process both at the Department of State and with the sponsoring Arkansas Resettlement Agency. Based upon this due diligence, I have confidence in the high standard of security checks and that the incoming refugees will have the community support needed to get jobs, to pay taxes, and to be assimilated into our American culture and way of life. As a result, I communicated by letter to Secretary Pompeo Arkansas's willingness to accept refugees and, of course, this took also the approval of Washington County, which I'll reference. My authorization is until December 31, 2020. My administration will continue to monitor the assimilation of the refugees, their employment, and their compliance with our laws. At the end of the year, I will advise the Department of State as to whether Arkansas will continue to participate in the program. I certainly hope that will be the case because the refugees settled today have been successful. In fact, 98% of refugees become self-sufficient within 90 to 180 days of arrival. And so some of you have asked, well, who are they and where do they come from? The refugees in the resettlement program are fleeing persecution or other hardship in their home country. For many, such as Watada Mwenda, and his family, leaving the Democratic Republic of Congo, literally made the difference between life and death. In fact, before they fled, Mr. Mwanda's son and daughter-in-law were murdered, and he was kidnapped and held hostage until he escaped and sought refuge. Mr. Mwanda was settled in Fayetteville. Many of the refugees come from African nations that are embroiled in conflict or war. Some come from countries such as Iraq and Afghanistan, where they are at risk because they have cooperated with U.S. officials. Now let me introduce a special guest, Ms. Lucia Akili-Mali. Ms. Lucia Akili-Mali. 
Uh, please stand if you would, please. Uh, she and her husband fled the Democratic Republic of Congo in 2000 because of the Civil War. They fled to Kenya where they waited for the next 18 years to be resettled. But while they waited, they made a difference in the refugee camp. Lucia opened a small grocery store and her husband, Kalula, planted a Baptist church. About 10 years into their time in Kenya, the Kenyan authorities reached out to them about fostering a pair of Congolese girls who had just arrived in the country unaccompanied. Their parents had been killed back in the DRC, the Congo, and they made their way to Kenya with a group of other refugees. Kolulu and Lucia agreed to take them in and adopt them as their own. They were all resettled in Arkansas in 2018 and have continued to work hard and have become a part of our community. Lucia has recently completed training as a certified nursing assistant and is working at a senior care facility. Oh, yes. <laughs> Her husband works for a manufacturing company in Springdale. Her oldest son attends NWAC, Northwest Arkansas Community College, and is hoping to transfer to the university next year to complete a bachelor degree in engineering. They're active members of Cross Church in Springdale. I also wanted to introduce two uh, additional ones. Hamayun Abdullah from Afghanistan. Hamayun, would you stand please? Uh, he is here, and I asked him why he is here, why he became a refugee, and the answer was because he worked for years in Afghanistan with the United States authorities, including the USAID. He was at risk, he went to a safe house, and he became a refugee to the United States of America. He lost his son because of his commitment to the United States of America. And then we have Manga Mukadama of the Congo. And uh, Manga came here also uh, uh, from the Congo in a very similar story that you've heard uh, previously. But I want to welcome them here to this distinguished committee. And uh, I'm going to give you a